<laughs> you probably get that from over here in a little while. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. Just wanted to um, uh, welcome y'all. We're doing a Birmingham real estate market update. And what we wanted to do uh, was just keep y'all uh, abreast of what's going on in our market and uh, just kind of let y'all know, you know, business is still going. And, and I wanted y'all to hear from other top producers in this market um, on, um, you know, what is going on in our market. So um, here goes. Um, first off, I want to introduce kind of our panel. First off, we've got uh, Barbara Turbville and Pell City Barb. Tell us a little bit. Uh, so, so some of the folks may not know who you are. Tell, give us a, a quick who you are. Well, I came on with EXP just a couple of months ago, been in the market or real estate world for a little over five years. And this is actually a great time in real estate. I found that while a lot of other agents are kind of stepping away from the market, people are still looking for houses out here. I had three appointments today. One was virtual. I just took them through and did a, a FaceTime, a fake, you know, live video. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's great because the people who are looking right now, they're really looking, they're not kicking tires and, and just out because, well, of course you need to be staying home. And so it's nice. You, the people that I'm actually out showing are really looking. You mm -hmm. can limit, you know, the whole family from coming kind of just the decision makers and making sure that they're pre-qualified, but it's it's a great market out here right now. Sweet, all right. We also got, uh, so Barb's in Pell City. Adam, you are currently downtown Birmingham. Give us a little update on like uh, who you are, where you're from, and then we'll, we'll get into, um, you know, uh, talking about, you know, what's going on in your market, but just yeah. so everybody knows who y'all are. Adam Booker, I am with the Gusty Goulas Group. I'm from Trustville and I live downtown on First Avenue North now. Trust Vegas in the house. All right, Rob. Yeah, my name is Rob Drum. I've been an uh, uh, associate broker now at EXP for uh, coming up on six months and been in the real estate business coming up on three years. You are our uh, numbers guru. <laughs> yeah, I, I can try to stay up to date on, uh, on all the stats on the market. Uh, all the things that are kind of developing, uh, I read a lot, you know, try to try to uh, keep everyone updated on news and um, and I work with a lot of investors too. So they're kind of extra sensitive to what's going on in the market. Appreciate it. All right. Chad Beasley. Hey, hey. who, who um, are you? Tell who am you. I? Yeah. I? I'm Chad. Uh, I've been, uh, this is my 23rd year in the business. Um, so I've, I've, I've been through a, a few cycles in the market. Why are you laughing, Jenny? Because <laughs> <laughs> we're <friends. laughs> um, So um, yeah, I mean, I've um, been at EXP for about six months, um, loving every minute of it. And um, you know, I, I echo what Barb was saying. I mean, we've got activity out there in the market, which we're gonna talk about, but um, um, so yeah, my primary market is Shelby County, um, with a focus on Chelsea cause I live in Chelsea and do a lot in the Chelsea market. But, um, uh, of course I'm all over the, uh, the greater Birmingham market, but most of my activity is in Shelby County. All right. Jenny Williams. Hey, I'm Jenny Williams and, uh, Chad and I are twins. Uh, this is my 23rd year <laughs> in the business and, uh, I've been at EXP since the end of 2018 and, uh, I live in Chelsea also, but, um, I work mostly by referral, so I could be anywhere and, uh, I'm in Vestavia a lot. <laughs> Excited to be here with all these awesome people. Sweet. Well, my, uh, my name is Gusty Goulis and I run the Gusty Goulis group at EXP Realty and uh, I am coming live from Homewood, Alabama. So, well, cool. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me today. I really just wanted to see, um, you know, with, with everything going on in our world, um, you know, we just uh, found out from uh, Governor Kay Ivey that we've got a uh, shelter in place uh, for the state. We had seen that about a week ago with the city of Birmingham 
with uh, Mayor Randall Woodfin and uh, the Birmingham City Council passing that for the city of Birmingham. So now it's statewide. So how do y'all think this is going to affect the real estate business? Who wants to take that? You know, my understanding from, from you know, just seeing how it's worked in, in the city of Birmingham is – think it will be pretty much business as usual for us. I mean, I, I've had several clients reaching out to me that are that are closing in April wanting to know, hey, you know, how does this affect us? And um, I'm hearing from moving companies that they have paperwork that says that they are essential and can continue with their business of, of moving people around. Um, I know the title companies and attorneys offices are all doing the same. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like that um, you know, with doing what we've been doing already, of uh, just being careful with what we're doing, I think our, our business continues as much as people are wanting to get out there and do it. Anybody else want to throw in on that? No, I agree. I mean, we are having some people that are um, fearful and they are backing out of contracts. So um, contracts are not something usually that you can go, oh, hey, there's something that I'm unsure of in the market. I need to back out. <laughs> but we are seeing some of that. Um, but uh, normally very quickly replacing that with, um, uh, you know, another sale. So uh, for as, as the fear that we're seeing is um, there's a lot more confidence out there. Um, uh, and I think the fear comes from people not knowing about their um, work um, and their, uh, their job positions. You know, some people have been let go and I think a lot of fear comes from that. Um, other than that, I say, I mean, I, I just put um, a house on the market uh, uh, in Vestavia this week, got two offers on it and got it under contract. I put another one in Chelsea on the market um, yesterday. And, you know, it's a $479,000 house and uh, had a showing on it today. And those people are excited about moving forward and putting their house on the market. So I agree with Barb that um, people who are looking right now are serious. Now, I, I also did have someone this week that, um, uh, you know, asked me over and over to see it. Cash money could close in no time. House was absolutely perfect for them. Sent me a message the next day saying I'm totally going to pass and stay where I am. So, you know, that actually happens in our every normal, you know, right. every normal market. So, um I still see a lot of positives, but, um, you know, as a group, we're really gauging a lot of this. And I think, Chad, you've been our, our most positive cheerleader. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, you have how many pending in for April? Um, I have, including the one that closed this morning, uh, 12 transaction sides closing in April. Wow. Um, and, and some of those, I mean, have just been added. I mean, I just, I just added one yesterday that will close in April and, I've listed three homes this week, got another one coming next week, um, had two go under contract within the past week. I wrote an offer for a new buyer yesterday, and there are multiple offers on that property, so we're just holding our breath, hoping we get that one. Um, I've got another buyer that I'm going out to look with tomorrow, so I mean, it's so far, it's busier than I would have expected it to be during all of this. Um, and I think everybody else feels the same way. I, I'm really kind of surprised by it. I, I, you know, who knows what the future holds and the longer this goes on, will it affect, you know, people's confidence and just, you know, but right now everything seems to be business as usual. Um, if it has slowed down, uh, I'm I'm, I'm fearful for what it would have looked like for my life if we were still going as normal because I mean, <laughs> right well um, like I need a clone. Chad, I, yeah I've got I've got nine or ten under contract a couple of them are active break clauses but I mean it's still business as usual and and I know a lot of agents who are like afraid to be out showing but if if the virus is your reason to not show well you're you know, you're just losing out because as long as you're staying safe and you're, you know, practicing yeah. the gotta be correct smart. protocol, I mean, this is not a time to sit back at home and, and rock in the corner while you're sucking your thumb. Well, if you do that, you have to start over in a few months from zero. That's right. And that's not a good place to be. Absolutely. Correct. Uh, 
So, um, so um, obviously, Chad, Barbara, y'all have got um, a bunch of homes under contract. Adam, Rob, let's hear from you. What's um, uh, what is y'all's April looking like, pending wise? Uh, mine's looking good. I think I've got three right now. Uh, no, four, four. Um, I've had two new listings go live, and both of them were kind of nervous. One of them, one family has a young child, so we just um kind of made sure that we told them to keep lights on, like keep all the interior doors open, just so people coming through don't have to touch as much, touch as many surfaces. Right. Um, and the other family, they backed out and then came back in and changed their mind. Um, they're they're a little older. Hopefully, they're not watching because that they might not appreciate that. But uh, they ended up they just moved to a um, kind of like a weekend cabin the weekend by age. Market. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put numbers out there. Uh, but they just went to a weekend cabin the weekend their house went on the market, and we um, ended up with three offers. So they moved back in on Sunday. So they were really only gone for two or three days. That's actually a pretty good idea. Yeah, it was best for them. Has that ability? Yeah, it was it was their idea, but it was definitely the best way to go just for them and their situation. Um, so I mean, they were only both of those families were only really kind of out of their normal routine for probably two or three days with showings and then, uh, they're both under contract for over asking price so they're happy sweet rob what are you seeing in your world what you got pending yeah. uh i've got two pending in april and then uh i had two that are gonna sell and buy but it's kind of elective so they're gonna just wait until this you know hopefully blows over and then make their move um and I think, you know, probably there's, there are some people who are taking that approach. Um, and then, I mean, I've got a, got a commercial listing that just went live um, that all the businesses in it are struggling, but everyone's kind of working together to get through it. And um, so I think that'll, that'll be a good, good property is just right now kind of throwing some things uh, up in the air with it. Sure. I've got showing uh, confirmations popping up on my screen as we're doing this. That's awesome. on my list. Sorry. Well, that was one thing I was going to ask. What have y'all seen from a showing standpoint on your listings? Is showings about the same? Or are they a little bit less, a little bit more? Y'all tell me. I would say I think the they're same. about the same. I think kind of like Barb said, the people that are looking are really serious. Um, right. There's not really anybody out there just kind of looking for fun. It seems to be sort of price dependent uh, from what I'm seeing. I think my, you know, the things that are under about three or so are getting a whole lot more activity than the ones that are like four, above four. Yeah, I would agree with that too. Yeah, I would agree with that too. We've got, um, I know for April, we've got uh, as a team 49 under contract. Um, so we've been busy. Um, we're, we're putting houses under contract daily. Um, so, you know, it's, um, we're really trying to meet our clients where they're at, you know, right. uh, some folks are, you know, more interested in a, a virtual tour right now, um, or a FaceTime tour. I did um, that this morning. <laughs> did you? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's in, and people are making offers based on that FaceTime tour. Right. So, you know, it's just making, a, you know, a little bit of changes in, in our business. But, you know, as far, I'm glad to hear that y'all are seeing that everything seems to be about the same on the showings. Uh, well, and what's funny too, Gusty, is last year I sold three houses via virtual tours where people were moving here. And so it's really not that different right. for us to show, you know, the local folks via a video tour. I mean there's still all of the safety nets in place, home inspection and where they can actually put their eyes on it. And if something's wrong, well then, you know, be able to adjust accordingly. But I'm also with Jenny, I had a house in Indian Springs that was listed was supposed to close yesterday and they backed out, I guess it's almost been two weeks now. And, um, you know, it went back under contract the same day. And then last week, the agent who was called, you know, who were supposed to close yesterday, they're still interested. And I'm like, you know, this, this isn't a time to go back and forth. You either, you need to still stay with your business decision or make another one, but you got to get off of the wire. 
That's right. I, I was talking with one of our team members this past week, and they made an offer last weekend. They were runner up, and then the next day they got a phone call that said, "Hey, you know, they I don't think they could produce like maybe a pre-approval letter or something like that." So they ended up getting the, the contract on it. So you know, even going the the backup route is working. So that's the good news. Mm -hmm. Jenny, were you gonna say something? I was just going to say that real estate has always and will always be an emotional decision. It's, yes. um, it, you know, people are fickle because people, it's such a big decision that people are always fearful of making a wrong one. Um, so add everything that's going on in the world right now. It's an extra emotional situation. Um, so I think it's just navigating that and being very respectful of people's emotions, um, which you know, can wear us out <laughs> um, uh, very easily because we see things logically um, and we're not in their shoes. Um, <laughs> bless you. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jennifer, they all blessed you. <laughs> she have the coronavirus. Yeah, she's got she's got the corona allergies. <laughs> um, I've got a question for you. Um, with so many people being fearful of, um, uh, uh, you know, stock markets, you know, people losing money uh, uh, in the stock market, um, their four hundred one ks, you know, what are you hearing as far as feedback from that? <laughs> Sorry, my dog just started chasing geese. <laughs> Who did you ask? Rob. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I thought that sounded like it might be for me, but. Uh, Do we have a Bob on here? No, it was Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I will say that I'm getting a lot of leads. I mean, a couple, probably a couple phone calls a day from investors that are looking to buy here. Some of them are looking to sell and invest in something different real estate wise or um you know make make changes um i definitely think this this kind of ride that the stock market is taking everybody on is gonna stir some people up and you know look for a better solution uh which is is good for all of us you know if you work with investors um so yeah it's it's definitely had an effect and uh i think people are, you know, coming around to real estate investing is growing, you know, as a mind share of the investing world. So uh, I think this is only going to accelerate that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, I want to let everybody know that's, that is watching right now. If you have a question for anybody on here, feel free to, to shoot us a comment. Um, I know Meredith, uh, who's uh, with Jones Warren Home Inspections, we work with them a lot. She had uh, put um, a note that they're still having inspections scheduled every day. So that's great news. And uh, they've been doing faith time consult uh, consultations at the end of their inspections. So uh, for people that couldn't be there. So, um, you know, that's that's, you know, we're all figuring out how to adapt right now. And so, Merida, thanks for sharing. Um, we appreciate uh, all of your team's hard work during this as well. And as always, um, Rob, on one point that you had made was, you know, talking about the stock market, you know, there, I think what we might see is more folks use their, um, their 401ks to, to buy real estate. And that's something that not a ton of people really know about, but you can use that vehicle to purchase homes and um, and especially with the volatility here recently, that could be a good strategy. So I think that might be something that's going to uh, to increase. Uh, so we might be seeing that a little bit more. So something else that uh, you know was kind of already a trend that I, I think um, you know with our Express Offers program coming out uh, and what we've already been seeing in the market is there's a lot of um, sectors of commercial real estate that investors were a little questionable about. And there was a transition into all these funds, um, like the, the funds that are on our platform, buying single family uh, residences as investments. Um, and I think this may accelerate that kind of transfer and flow of capital into that, into those funds uh, and, you know, maybe see even more buyers 
uh, like that coming into the market. I agree with you, Rob. I, I don't know. Um, I haven't really disclosed, but I, I also have an accounting background. And so, you know, that's what I did in my, my previous world. And, and that really is a great time to use some of those monies that you have in your 401k to invest because the end result is, is we all need somewhere to live, but not everybody is going to be able to buy a house. And so if you are going to take some time to do some investing, you're going to be able to capitalize on that because again, everybody's got to have a place to live. Um, I, I did want to pop in and just let y'all know that um, with the new order uh, that Kay Ivey uh, set in, uh, it does state that real estate services is still considered essential services. So that's good news for us and our industry and, and including the appraisers and the title companies. So it's going to be, you know, business as usual, but business is going to be as usual and odd <laughs> for a little <laughs> bit. So, um, but I, we did get that confirmation. So I wanted to let y'all know. So that's definitely good news. Um, we, somebody touched on mortgages. What are y'all seeing in the mortgage world? You know, I mean, we, we, we saw interest rates, you know, been pretty volatile. So what have y'all seen over the last week? From what I'm seeing, the um, the most volatility and, and drama has been in the government loans, the FHA, VA, USDA. Um, conventional seems to be pretty steady from what I'm seeing. Um, so those are, you know, people are, um, I had a lady yesterday talk to somebody and get, um, I, I, I think she's putting like 15% down on a conventional loan and, and uh, was quoted three and a quarter. Um, so, um, interest rates are still really good on that. I think the government loans are still I higher. Have I haven't seen yesterday. where those are the, somebody the uh, past couple of days. Yeah. I don't really want my sellers entering into an FHA contract unless they have to, um, just because there's just been, uh, one lender told me yesterday that they're not even closing FHA loans. I mean, there's just so much around, um, uh, uh FHA right now. And if, you know, so many things that you have to consider um, if you have any appraisal issues because of what's happening in the market, it's going to haunt you for six months. Um, there are just a lot of things to consider um, with them. Maybe they didn't lock in. I mean, you have to ask a lot of questions uh, uh, so that that actually closes. Um, I'm trying my best to uh, avoid FHA. Anybody else want to throw in on the mortgage talk? We can move on to a different topic. You have excellent credit score and uh, you are putting a little bit more than, um, you know, 5% down. You're going to still get a really good rate. Um, I think Chad's right. It's just the volatility um, in, you know, surrounding those government. Well, and the reality is a lot of people flock to, you know, FHA because you can put as little as three and a half percent down. A lot of people don't realize that if you have good enough credit, you can do as little as 3% down with a conventional loan. Um, right. So there, there are conventional products out there that you can uh, take advantage of and avoid some of the craziness in the government loan market right now. For sure. Well, and I just would please, um, as other professionals, you know, urging other professionals, I had an offer yesterday that was presented as conventional and um, on a property that I know because of the flipping rules, one that I own cannot go FHA. We haven't owned it long enough. And, uh, you know, it wrote it conventional and said, oops, uh, it's FHA. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Not going to go. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and a great agent, you know, the stuff like this happens, but um, a lot of times people can only go FHA because their um, debt to income ratio is too high or their credit scores just don't cut it for that other 3%, um, you know, conventional product. Um, so just, just, you know, fun stuff to, to make sure you verify before you actually get all parties to sign off on. What, um, what? Heck, I forgot what I was going to ask. Oh, uh, Rob, what I know you just came out with a blog. Um, you want to just kind of throw out some highlights of, um, you know, what you shared with that? Yeah, so uh, this is actually the second week I've done this, but every Wednesday I'm putting out 
uh, kind of video summary of our MLS statistics for the last week and just tracking that, you know, seeing how it compares to the week before, how it compares to the same week a year ago and, uh, you know, trying to stay on top of what our, um, how many pendings there are, how many listings are coming on. Um, just a real, when the market is potentially moving a lot faster than normal, it's good to kind of keep an eye on that, I think, um, for all of us. And then I also cover just uh, some of the relief efforts, the stuff that was in the stimulus bill for a lot of my clients and agents that I'm friends with that uh, there's a lot in there. I mean, there's really something in that bill for everybody, no matter what you do. So um, just trying to summarize that and make sure that people know what's out there and what's what's available to help them in their business. Good. I appreciate you doing that. Um, you provide a, a wealth of knowledge um, in those blogs. So uh, it's robdrum.us. If anybody wants to bookmark that, um, you'll get a lot of fantastic info. So thank you for your time putting that in there. Thank you. Um, so we, we might have some home buyers that are looking, watching this. What would you tell folks? What are you telling your home buyers right now? that are out there looking get pre-approved and know what your what your buying power is there's that that's the best advice you can give anybody right now is get pre-approved and then we'll go find your dream house but um yeah the no tire kicking right now well i think we're still in a situation too that if you if you like a house you you better act fast because right um you know, the, the we, we're dealing a little bit with, we already were having inventory issues. And now with this going on, you've got some sellers who have decided to wait to put their homes on the market because they're concerned about, you know, having people come into their house. And so they're waiting it out. And so those homes that would be coming on the market right now, some of them just aren't. And then you've got some people who have pulled their homes off of the market for the same reasons. So the lack of inventory is sort of getting magnified right now. Uh, but so if, if, if you're looking at it and like it, chances are there are multiple others that are too. Right, I had a deal, yes, I guess last week that as we were walking in the front door, the notification changed on my phone that it had gone under contract. And of course that's the house that they wanted. So, um, you know, if you, you need to act fast and, and uh, if you're interested in something, then make an appointment to go see it and, and be ready to put an offer on it right away. Well, and that's probably the best advice, Barb, is that um, uh, no, if you don't need to buy right now and you're not very serious, then don't go see houses. Um, don't uh, use it for entertainment right now. We are not in that kind of market. Um, we are in uh, only serious people. You know, one of my buyer clients um, contacted me just a little bit ago to tell me he's positive. And uh, all I can say, he's positive with the virus. All I can say is, thank heavens, he's FHA. And uh, I've told him that he does not need to be seeing houses right now because um, his rates are going to be way too high. He needs to wait till the market stabilizes. Um, I could have, he's been asking me all week to go <laughs> because he only had a fever, didn't have any of the other symptoms. So want to make sure that you are um, very serious when you are looking in this market. And um, also even taking what you said, Barb, um, about getting pre-approved first, uh, it's all, it's very important on who you're pre-approved with too. Um, yes. Have, ask your trusted agent uh, uh, if this loan person um, is someone they have confidence in because um, uh, it, it does matter who says um, that you're approved right now more than anything. My two cents. You know, one thing... <clears throat> It, this can be on the home buyers or the agent's perspective, but um, if you've got a fever, you don't need to be out and about. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. um, you know, uh, you might miss the house, but just let us go FaceTime it. Right. And, you know, we, we want all of our clients to be safe and healthy. And, you know, we don't, um, we know of people, I know, I know of people that have had the virus. I know of people, uh, 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 
you know, a couple of uh, lines down that have actually passed away. And, you know, it's serious. Um, so, you know, don't take it lightly. You know, we've got to, you know, just follow the, the guidelines as the CDC has recommended. But if you're, if you're not feeling good, just let us FaceTime you or, or let, let's figure out a different way. So we need to keep everybody healthy. Um, that, that's going to be the best way to do it because if you go, if you're sick and you go to look at a house, whether you're an agent or um, a buyer, if you happen to touch a handle, what if somebody else touches that handle, puts, you know, their, their hand in their face and then they might be sick. So you don't want to, you don't want to feel bad by getting somebody else sick. So um, what other, let me ask you this precautions. What, what are you, what are y'all doing or what are y'all seeing uh, from uh, precautions from showings or anything like that? I actually am carrying a can of Lysol with me, and if I can get there a few minutes before the client, I spray the box down before I open it and spray handles. Um, today at one of the showings was nice. They had a box of gloves out at the front door, so it was nice that, you know, they're, that the, the sellers are making precautions available for you, and I see that everybody's got hand sanitizer at the front door, and those things are nice so that you can just, it keeps you mindful that you need to not be touching things. I also think it's a wonderful thing that we're telling our sellers, turn your lights on, open the doors. Well, it also helps the house sell better when all the lights are on. So, you know, they're, they're putting their house in, in, their, in the best possible light by having it ready for the buyer. Yeah, I've started with my, um, with my listings, uh, my, my occupied listings, I've started taking it a step further from just, you know, professional photos and doing the walkthrough video. Um, you know, so that just maybe eliminates a couple of tire kickers who might have gone and looked at it, but they see something in that video that tells them that the layout doesn't work for them or something. And so that keeps that exposure from that particular group of people from being there in that house. So that's just one of the things that I've started doing. Well, and Chad, you uh, wrote a blog recently about some of the precautions and how to get yeah. safe. So what is your um, blog address? Um, it's on my website, um, chadbeasley.com, and it's, you can just click on the blog um, at the upper right-hand corner, the, the blog tab, and it'll, you'll find it. It'll be the first one on there right now. I thought that was really good. I read it. Thank you. Yeah, this perfect summary of that how we should all be approaching safety right now. Yep, for sure. Yeah, we got to be cautious. I mean, we, we're, we want to be in this business a while. So Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, this is how we make our living. So, you know, we've got to be careful not only for the public, but for ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. for me, one, I can't afford to be sick and laid up in the bed for a couple of weeks, but I also can't afford for the public to go, ooh, Chad's exposed. Don't call him. <laughs> you right. know? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and it's I mean, they might put a billboard out there. They might. <laughs> <laughs> I, they'll spray paint COVID-19 across my billboard. <laughs> well, I feel it's our responsibility um, as leaders and small business owners to, um, you know, do everything we can in our power to keep everyone safe also. Yes. Um, so, uh, and I, I feel like we're doing that. I'm doing way more. I mean, wiping everything down everywhere I go, constantly carrying hand sanitizer <laughs> under one arm and Clorox wipes under the other. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah, we got to stay safe. So I, no, I think that's awesome. Um, what, you know, all right, for, for people that are considering selling their house, what, what are y'all telling your, your home sellers that might be saying, you know, is now a good time to put our house on the market? I had that question at 8 15 this morning and uh you know you hear everybody all the pendings that are on here um you've heard all the offers that everybody is is writing um i think it's such a great time wouldn't you all agree yeah, yeah i agree i got that call today too i had been talking to some people a few months ago about selling their house and it wasn't the right time for them but she called me today and she's like are people still buying i mean Am I too late? And I'm like, no, now is actually one of the better times because again, you know, we are making sure that people are pre-approved. We're not just taking anybody through the house. They're, these are people who really want to buy. So I think it's a great time to list. 
think that if it's a multi-million dollar property um, and, and Gusty, you just closed on one, your team just closed on one, um, you know, the advice may be a little bit different just depending on what is also available in that neighborhood um, and surrounding because um, most of the time we can check MLS and find that competition, there is there there isn't any. And so their house is desperately needed to be put on the market. But um, in some multi-million dollar situations, um, there's a little bit too much inventory. So yeah. it's going to be a case by case basis, of course. Yeah, I think it, I've, I've been telling people that are asking me that question, you know, it, 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 it's your home, it's your health, you've got to make the call on if this is the right time for you. Right. Um, and then beyond that, as far as the market goes, I think the timing is fine. Um, you know, there, there are people looking, things are selling. The, the, the one I finalized um, yesterday afternoon, I just put it on the market last Wednesday and we had one showing and it's under contract. That's all you need. Um, yeah. So, so there are people buying. And then, you know, the question is, you know, if, if we do start seeing a slowdown in the market from this, and I think, you know, based on some of the things I've seen Rob put out with his videos and everything, the, the research shows from other countries that have gone through pandemic situations like this as, you know, volume, if the volume slows down and, and decreases some, then once we start coming out of this, there's a, there's a big kind of a, a rush and a bump right there at the beginning, you know, and so you don't want to be waiting and chasing that you know, have your house on the market. So if that's the time that it sells, you're there and ready when that hits. Yeah, absolutely. There was a, there was a report out of China that, um, that was uh, an, an article this, I think this past week that mm -hmm. um, when sanctions uh, were, were opened up that home sales, you know, is like pent up demand. Right. So. Yeah. I think I saw that the, yeah, the, the article that I saw um, said that their, their activity had tripled. That's fantastic. I think after everybody sits at home for a few months, they're sick of their house and they won't. Right. <laughs> Look, I think I think restaurants are going to go crazy. People are going to be traveling. There's going to be all things, all kind of things going on. Um, for those people who haven't had major economic impact from losing income over this time period, and then those people, it's just going to take some time yeah. for them to get back on their feet and dig out. For sure. Even our Airbnb um, uh, property. Uh, had a ton of cancellations um, and mainly because of the restaurants being closed um, people didn't like the idea of having to take all their groceries when they were staying on vacation uh, and that's why they were canceling uh, we did have some people ask questions about you know what extra steps were we taken to disinfect the property which I think is an excellent question um, uh, so we had a ton of cancellations at first, um, but before we were really panicking, all of those were replaced with other people. So um, it's just interesting just to, to, to see what's happening. There is a lot of panic and then people calm down and then <laughs> the panic comes back up again. So um, we're all in this together for sure. Did we we lo we lose Gusty? Gusty. We it looked like he was scrambling to, to plug his computer in or something. <laughs> I saw that too. Uh, um, well, I would like to throw out there, you know, you talk about it, you know, this we all being in this together. I mean, you know, some of us have been through, you know, major market downturns and seen what that was like. I mean, if, if any agents that are out there watching this, you know, if you have questions, concerns, just need somebody to talk to that's been through crazy stuff before, you know, give me a shout. I mean, you know, I can't fix it for you. I can't make it all, you know, wonderful, but I can give you some perspective on, on things that kind of work to come out the other side of it and, and prosper from it. It's also a great time to stay abreast of different trainings and, and just to, you know, hone on on your craft a little bit. So there's no need to just sit in the corner, stay busy, be safe, and learn from the situation instead of, you know, just being stuck in the moment. Yeah, you know, Barb, I thought I was going to have a chance to rest, but I have been hey. working hours. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> Every day, have y'all, have y'all all been working long hours? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. 
on yesterday um, I was um, I had been on the phone for a while with a new, a new buyer that had called me that's going to be moving from Tennessee and I got off the phone and I'd been scrambling all day doing different things and <laughs> Jennifer made the comment that if anybody was just sitting around listening to me they'd never know that there was anything going on out there no. the same here it's uh and I think that's a good gauge for um you know for what's happening I think it's an excellent gauge that we have there is no rest or quarantine for us now quarantine is fine we're we're not being able to rest while we're in quarantine <laughs> right <laughs> Real. hey you know I had a question that um you know somebody somebody reached out to me and was like um you know, when, when are the, the big deals going to happen? You know, um, so, I mean, do y'all see like some big deals that are going to be popping out, you know, here soon? Or what do y'all think? No. I'm not seeing a downturn. Everything we're doing is still normally over less price. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen anything crazy to indicate that that that's happening yet. I mean, as longer this drags on, is it possible? Maybe, but so far I'm not seeing it. Yeah. I was just thinking in nine months, everybody will need a larger house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It really is just going to depend on the income. You know, if people are, if they lose income for an extended period of time, then we are going to, to, to see some issues with that. Um, but I, I don't think there are going to be any deals coming up uh, in the next month or two. <laughs> I think your good deal is that interest rates are so low. You have okay. we're buying mm -hmm. right now. Right. That's, that's kind of the best. Yeah. Way. And I've had that, that conversation with a few buyers that, that this really, you know, has, you know, to this point has not been the time to get a deal on the purchase price of the house. You're, you you got to look at your deal of, of, of is what your purchasing power is based on interest rates and, um, you know, that, that's where, that's where you got to look at that. You're kind of getting some sort of a deal in it. You're, at least you're not, at least you're not paying top of the market prices and we're at, you know, seven and a half, eight percent, um, which people still buy houses in that environment, by the way, I've been there. <laughs> in fact, markets are great when it's that way because it gets people off the fence when rates go up. So never be afraid about that. <laughs> Um, you know, one thing I want to ask you all is, um, you know, how do you feel, you know, your business is going to change because of this, um, with what we've gone through? How do you see your business changing for the future? What are you going to take away? And, um, you know, how is it, like, I know we're adapting right now, but what are you going to continue with? I think, we're gonna I think if you don't stay in, on top of technology, you're going to get left behind because I think we're going to do more and more virtual showings and, you know, your, your closings are going to be remote and you're dealing with your inspectors and everything remotely. So being able to adjust the technology and, and to, to do a good job at it, I think is what is going to be the most important. Video is key. Well, here's, here's the trick to the whole technology thing that we've got to remember is the, the more we're using technology um, in this social distancing era, and the longer that continues, the less contact we're having with people, which means less opportunities to build those lasting long-term relationships. So we've really got to step up, you know, the personal touch side of it and figure out how to do that when we're not in contact with them and can't get closer than six feet away you know and so we have to you know that comes in 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 just communicating uh better and more often to to build those relationships keep people informed um and all of that so i think that's that's a that's a big one that's been in my mind is just doing a really uh doing a better job of communicating and i've gotten a lot more comfortable with things like this <laughs> you know that was you know right. six so six months ago was foreign to me so <laughs> Uh, I think um, having the virtual appointments, listing appointments, and um, buyer appointments, doing more of those, I really enjoy those. Um, and, uh, you know, Zillow kind of changed a lot of how we were operating anyway, um, where people didn't see the need to um, have those consultations. Uh, uh, you know, they just want to jump right in, uh, yeah. get that self-gratification. Uh, uh, 
they just want to see what they want to see. And when there's so many things that people need to know. So I think that's going to be something I'm really taking away from all this. A lot more of those focusing on that. Well, and that's the thing is the house that I showed today, it was a Zillow lead and they were frustrated. They had talked to a few agents before and, and they're out of town and, and everybody was kind of like, well, I can't help you. I mean, yes, you can. You have that thing on your phone, you know, take it and use it. And so, you know, it, and it was kind of fun. The, the people that I showed, you know, they were kind of pushing in their seventies and, and showing them how to, to set up, you know, to be able to take a FaceTime call. And, and so it was exciting, you know, you, we, we did a trial run, you know, make sure that you guys can sign in and you can see things. And, and then where they were able to ask questions and, hey, can you zoom in? What color really is the, the marble in the kitchen? And, you know, so you still had that opportunity to have a, a close building relationship, even though it's all virtual. Adam, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot more people start working from home kind of after. I all agree. Of, which, um, going back to earlier, you kind of mentioned how are things different for showings and listings. My listings that have gone live these past two weeks had people like, I mean, at eight o'clock, they were requested to see it at 8 15. Like they were ready to go immediately. And I think it's because everybody is at home. Mm -hmm. So, where usually people need to wait until like lunchtime or after work or the weekend, I mean, like we were jam packed yesterday morning with showings. Um, so I think people are ready to like, are able to get out a lot quicker than usual, which is a good problem. Yeah. I definitely think that, um, now people are going to be very much more open to, you know, video conference like this. Uh, they're going to be more open to doing a FaceTime show and they're, it's, it's definitely, you know, it, it's breaking people out of some comfort levels. Um, so I definitely see some changes. Um, <laughs> you just got to adapt. Um, yeah. you know, like, I, I mean, I, I, I do more videos now, but you know, I, I, I was afraid of doing videos and I was like, now nah, I just hit the live button. Don't even care anymore. So, uh, just go. But usually if I pr start preparing for something, I do worse than when, if I just hit the live button. <laughs> I did have a live, um, one go go wrong on me today but you know what's going to happen the internet connection wasn't or my uh, service wasn't that great where I did it and so it chopped it up in three different pieces <laughs> yeah that happens or your laptop goes dead with when it says 17 percent uh right. battery <laughs> whatever um uh, well I, I did see what uh one thing let's talk about you know I've got almost this is gonna be my last question because we've been going for about an hour and I really appreciate y'all's time but you know, one thing is, how are you marketing differently? And um, so who wants to run with that? I think social media, because everybody is at home scrolling through Facebook and Instagram more so than usual. So they are, think, but one of the things I've noticed is that engagement is down, even though everybody's on, because there's so much to look at. You know, like everybody's looking at funny videos. I mean, so that's one thing I have noticed. Zach and I were talking about that um, yesterday, but um, you're right. And so we've been advertising, um, you know, virtual listing appointments and even um, my stagers doing uh, FaceTime appointments, which is, I think is so cool. And she just does her consultation from that. So, you know, they're just different, you know, fun ways. And of course, I've got the silly sign writers that say free toilet paper on, <laughs> on whenever you buy uh, the house. And so those have been fun. What's been your feedback on that? People laugh. I mean, not like they're going to buy the house for the toilet paper. But <laughs> the main thing is I just wanted my seller signs to stand out. So, and they oh, are, the that. sellers have loved them. They just have thought that they just love it. They think it's great. Well, when I went to Publix, there was like uh, three rolls of toilet paper left. And when I was at Target yesterday, um, I, there was about one left. So, you know, the it, people are thirsty for that toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> it would be funny to have a mound on the table and, and have a little card that says, take one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it might as well. I, and I was at the pig last week and they were selling like a, an individual uh, toilet paper for like $1.89. I was like, my gosh. 
stole it, baby. <laughs> grocery store is making money they, they haven't made money in years and now like, all of a sudden they're feeling it so, um good for them by the way um any other marketing side, everything is yourself? fresh at the store so you know you don't have to check expiration dates yeah sure you're just in your pantry <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> what other marketing stuff have you all uh, are y'all seeing or doing or anything like that I'm taking this opportunity to learn how to use KV Core some. Um, I really haven't, yeah, I haven't done anything with it, but uh, I've been using it a lot. I mean, been generating a lot of leads through Facebook ads and all that good stuff that, uh, you know, I was before I was kind of too busy to, to figure all that out. And so, you know, tried to invest some time in that. So you're gonna be teaching some uh, lead generation classes here soon? <laughs> There's people better than me to teach it, but I'm trying to figure it out. Hey, it's uh, sometimes you just have to just go in there and do it yourself and then, you know, just make it happen. So, yeah. Are y'all contacting your sphere differently right now? Just reaching out to make sure that they're okay and if they need anything. Yeah. I'm asking if I can go shop for them or. Mm hmm if there's anything and I mean Chad's been shopping for people um just you know checking in to see if they're climbing the walls I think it's just an opportunity to just reach out and show that you care yeah. um and just you know be there for people I agree 100 percent well any kind of final thoughts as we uh we break off Thanks so much for doing this, guys. Keep Thank at you. it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Absolutely. Well, we've got, um, you know, I just want everybody to stay positive. Um, I'm still very optimistic at um, our real estate market. You know, there, there might be some of our agent friends that are out there and even our, you know, home buyers and home sellers that might be you know, a little bit down or, you know, uh, we've had friends that get laid off and, um, you know, we, we definitely want to um, be able to help them. What I, what I love about being a realtor is we're connected to so many people and, you know, we can help uh, people in so many ways and it might be help assisting in maybe finding somebody a job or bringing awareness to a, a restaurant or a business about, um, you know, what their needs are. And I think we, we're just a, a, a unique resource for a community that we can help um, get people together. And, and so, uh, you know, what I encourage, you know, people that are watching is let's, let's continue to collaborate. It doesn't matter what company you're with. I mean, we're, we're Birminghamians <laughs> and we're in this together. And, um, you know, we're, we're in a very unique situation that we've never seen and may never see again but you know as long as we stay positive as long as we lend a hand uh help people um you know life is uh continue to be uh to be good to all of us so uh i appreciate everybody watching in facebook land and i appreciate y'all's times um and i hope y'all have a fantastic weekend and we might do something like this next week how about that Sounds like fun. Yeah, fun. thank you. Y'all be good. Take care. All right. See you. Bye.